Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolay the Dawn. I remain your host, Chad Fury 333 and this next match is going to be between Vestricium and Julets on Vitra. And let's begin. Once again, Vitra has also been touched up in a similar way to Wanderlust. Very similar way, actually. It looks like it's basically the same texture, but it looks good anyway. It looks far better than it did before. And slightly shinier. Because specularity. Actually. Yeah, yep, specular texture was somewhat applied. I'm not sure if that's the base specular or not, but definitely normals. Normals in detail. That was definitely applied. It looks nice. Anyway, Gillette's going for the Cloaky Bot Factory, and Vestricium going for the Shield Bot... Sorry, Light Vehicle Factory. And Vestricium not going very quickly for an Assault. Looks like they want to have a few Scorchers set up first. I wonder if they're going for Calm Dive. Julets, on the other hand. Oh, are they going to be able to get this? Are they going to get it? Uh, maybe, maybe. No, not quite. That Mason barely saved. That was a little surprising. I wasn't sure. I mean, Julets are probably rather surprised they managed to nearly catch a Mason. But not anymore. Vestricium is going to be quite defensive. They already have their Scorcher there. So really, it's no big deal setting that up. I mean, it's right there. Why not have it? It works, I suppose. So Julet's going for... Looks like... Might be setting up for another Assault. I mean, they only have Glaze coming out right now. Do they? They have one Conjurer, that's it. Vestricium, on the other hand, already preparing with the Leveler. Now, one thing to point out on this map. Vehicles don't have great pathing properties. Remember, purple is unpathable. So, they have these ramps, and this ramp over here in the middle. And that's kind of it. Bots, on the other hand... They can pass just fine everywhere. Red is pathable, just slowly. Oh, and the Mason going down too. I missed that, but the Mason still goes down along with at least one of the metal extractors, of which there was only one. And the Glaive gets away. Nicely done, Julets. That's a lot of damage dealt to Vestricium out of the... I mean, I think Vestricium's going to go for a counterattack. They might feel they have to. At this point, they don't, actually. They're, they are ahead economically. Julets has not expanded that quickly. Nor do they look likely to expand that quickly. They're setting up a lot of power, but their power is still behind Vestricium. They're setting up some more metal, but even then it's still behind Vestricium. So Vestricium should not go for a counterattack too eagerly. They should set up for more defenses. They should try to be mindful of where Julets can come in. But Vestricium is ahead. And they clearly seem to know that. They're not too worried. They're rebuilding. They're probably going to reclaim all this stuff, which will help as well. And that's the thing. As long as they get everything set up, which they should be able to, then... Yeah, no problem. Like, Vestricium is in a rather safe spot. The only problem, like I said, is that this map favors bots pathing-wise. Quite heavily. So Vestricium, when they attack, they're probably going to have to go for one rather decisive strike from the center. I don't know if Julets realizes this, but that's basically their only hope. This one, though, Julets with... Eh, okay, a bit more harassment over to the sides. Just double-checking to make sure that they know whether or not Vestricium has expanded to different parts of the map. Good call. That is something you should do. Glaives are definitely worth that level of information, knowing exactly where your opponents have expanded to. Especially if you know that your opponents haven't expanded in a particular direction, and you might be able to use that as a staging point, as Julets is doing right now. That's especially good to know. At this point, I don't think this is going to work out super well. The two Glaives coming in here... Having to deal with the Scorcher is likely to be a problem. They might be able to get rid of a Metal Extractor. Maybe. Not even. Not even close. If they'd gone for the Scorcher, they actually would have been able to kill it, come to think of it. Like, just targeted the Scorcher. That would have been enough. They would have lost one of their number, but... I mean, after that point, it's get rid of the Mason and all this stuff for free, and then Vestricium actually starts falling behind. Or at least starts getting back on par. Vestricium is expanding... Like wildfire right now. Despite the fact that vehicles do have a pathing disadvantage on this map, Vestricium is not letting that stop them. The only thing that's letting them stop themselves is that they're forgetting that they kind of need to have more build power at their factory. Because they are getting to the point of excess. Though then again, Julets as well. In Julets' case, more because of a lack of power, as well as a lack of build power, but lack of energy. That's the problem. They haven't gotten any energy. And they need some of that. Like, right now, if not sooner. There's an idle con here. And an idle commander as well. So it kind of sucks there, because Julets would be in a really strong position if they were to just set up to actually use their economy. 
And Vestrucium, same thing. Vestrucium is in a great spot, they just don't... Ah, there we go, there's the metal. Well, some of it, at least. They could use one more mason here. But this should work out alright. So as it is, Vestrucium is pretty solidly moving forward. They have the eastern side of the map. Julets should be able to maintain control over the western side of the map, but it looks like, no, they're actually going to contest the eastern side of the map, and to some loss, losing a few glaives in the process. Not a huge deal yet. And the leveler coming in here is still going to be threatened by the Roccos. But how many defenders are here? Okay, three so far, fourth being built up. That's going to be a problem. Oops. So as it stands... Vestrucium is just setting up all the defenses. They realize they can only deal with the center of the map with mobile units. They have to use defenses to deal with the rest of the places that bots could path up to. So that's good. They've got that sorted. They do need to get a bit more metal. Julets, if it weren't for their lack of energy, would be way ahead of them. But Julets needs more energy. I don't know why they aren't building energy. Seriously, Julets, power plants are a thing. What is... No, Julets' commander is unupgraded so far. At this point, Vestrucium, they have, they've exploded, but once again, you need to build more stuff. Why are you not building things? I don't see why people don't understand. Repeat builds a thing. This is a thing. Hit this button. Like, seriously, whenever you're, whenever you're in a situation that you're building stuff, click this. Or hit I. I think that's a default. And then you won't have to worry about not having units build when they're done building. Because generally speaking, you just want to have units continue building because your army getting bigger is always good. If it's the wrong type of unit, then go back to your factory and start changing what type of units are being built. But infinite build is your friend. Anyway, that's going to work out well for Julets, though. I mean, Julets is still not doing especially great. I mean, Vestrucium does have the territory advantage to an extent, although Julets at this point, with the economic advantage... Without any overdrive either, actually, come to think of it, I'm apparently exactly wrong. The only thing Julius didn't have, other than energy, was build power, and they've got build power, they just need more energy. They just need more power plants. Why are they not building power plants? I don't know. I guess they're not looking at the top of their screen and seeing where their economy is, but they need more power plants. They desperately need more power plants. Mistrishium, on the other hand, they've actually got enough build power in their factory that they're making use of their economy. Finally, took a little while, but they finally have it. Oh, Julets is setting... Why are they setting defenses? They got a bunch of defenses over to the western side. Not a terrible idea, but with five Ravagers coming in, that's still not going to work out super well. And Julets, are they going to go for a counterattack is the real question. I don't know, because at this point, a counterattack here is probably suicide against all the defenders they'd be fighting. And Julets is... Oh, their commander is so exposed, and they have all this metal excess. The, the only way they could get out of that is if they built some bloody power plants. Finally building some power plants, although wind generators aren't great on this map, but like, 0.4 minimum is not great. It's okay. But yeah, their commander is in a pretty bad spot right now. And not retreating. Why is it not retreating? I don't understand this, Julets. Where You're looking... Well, Julets is about to lose the commander. And with that, most of their storage. And with that, one more shot. There's the shot! There's... Oh, wow! Holy crap! I thought the commander was almost dead. Just managed to dodge that. Barely. Apparently, Julets just microed away at the very last second. Because that shot should have killed Julets' commander. Now, Julets, they have the power for this. They have the build power for this. They can actually use that bloody storage they've been accessing on. They don't have it taken away from them by, by Vestrecium. That was close. Like, that was 500 metal that would have been lost completely. And I realized they still had lost quite a bit of more, quite a bit more metal by excessing, but at least they got something back from that. At least they were able to use the stored metal somehow. But as it is, Vestrecium on the eastern side still pushing hard and not able to do so much. Julets in a position of defense is working wonders just getting rid of Vestrecium's units. Now bear in mind, Vestrecium is ahead economically. Like, Julets, they are managing to use a bunch of spare metal that they happen to have there. But, yeah, that was... That was what that did. I think I think it was that Julets just 
moved their commander. Like they went, oh, hey, I'm gonna get attacked, and then moved their commander out of the way of the plasma shot because they had their commander selected when that happened, as far as I could tell. And that's a thing you can do in this game. You can dodge shots with units. That often happens automatically, but yeah, you can dodge shots with units. <clears throat> anyway, Vestrisium falling behind again from Julius. Julius able to get all the reclaim from here. I mean, this is what? Okay, it's quite a bit more reclaim than I actually you can reasonably get from that, but still, a thousand reclaim, a thousand metal reclaimed potential. And Julet's taking the eastern side as well. This is going to work out beautifully. The Strisium doesn't have the units to deal with this easily. I mean, the Slashers are kind of nice to have to help deal with the Rezuses. And the Raptors do a lot of good work, but it's not going to be enough. It's going to help a bit, but it's not quite enough. All the defenses have gone down, so Julet's has at least cracked this open. Even if they lose, lose all their units it's still going to be a lot harder for Vestrisium to hold the line next time around. And that next time around is already happening. Julet's coming with another wave of Zeus's. Vestrisium at least able to keep Julet's at bay enough. As finally all their armies coming to bear from their main base. It takes a little while, but there we go. The counterattack is in place. Julet's, what do you have? You have more Rockos and more Zeus's. That's not working out super well, though, I'm afraid. Actually, this one, I would almost say using, like, two dozen glaives would work out quite well. At any rate... Julets looks like they're going to be crushed by this. Ah, there's the noise. There is a Spectre out, though. Quite nice to have, but at this point, Vestrisium is still in a stronger position militarily. I mean... It took a little while for that to work out because of all the excess going on there. But Julet's excess makeup still didn't make up the fact that their economy is weaker and that their military... I mean, Cloakie versus... Cloakie versus vehicles is a bit of an uphill struggle for Cloakie. I feel like Cloakie versus everything is an uphill struggle. Cloakie's... I don't know. They've kind of gotten a bit weaker. Like, the Rockos got nerfed a while back and they were needing that nerf, but maybe it was too much. I'm not sure. Because Rockos would, would have been the answer here in the past. And Zeus kind of helps, but Zeus is slow. Glaives would have been a good idea here. And ticks. Actually, ticks work quite well against life vehicles, because life vehicles can't easily deal with the ground. Like, they have wolverines, I suppose, but otherwise, no, ticks would be able to just stun out this entire army, and then a bunch of glaives can come in and just wreck it. Just completely clean it up. So Tick Glaive could work well. At any rate, Julet's quite a bit behind Vestrisium. Unfortunately, Vestrisium, once again, not pushing a huge amount of metal, or not enough metal into their factory. Mostly using their build power to reclaim, which once again is leading to excess, which is not what they want to have happen. They need a couple of more caretakers at their main base, possibly just another factory. I mean, they have enough metal that it could work. But I'm not sure how much it matters, because the thing is, is that Vestrisium has a lot of slashers, which means they can deal with pretty much anything like Zeus and Warrior, anything that requires short range. And they also have the darts in case of Glaives, I suppose. They don't have any levelers, actually, in case of Glaives. I mean, the darts would be wrecked by Warriors if Warriors could get close enough. I'm not quite sure what the darts are for. Maybe getting rid of the Rockos. But a lot of what they have gets rid of Rockos. I mean, units get rid of Rockos. It's not like you need a whole lot of specialized units to do so. As long as they're sufficiently quick, they get rid of Rockos. And yeah, this is what it, why are the darts running towards the warriors? What the heck? Those darts have death wishes! Finally now able to get to the Rockos, but... It's not going enough, and the Scorchers just do a fine enough job anyway. So I guess the only thing the darts are really doing is distracting an unmicroed Spectre. And these Spectres do appear to be unmicroed. I don't see... Yeah, they're not really focusing on getting the strongest units. <clears throat> well, that that seems to be it. Vestrisium looks like they have a setup to actually deal with Julets. The only thing for Julets, though, is that they can't be attacked except through here. Or through here, but mainly through this right ramp here. That's about it. For Vestrisium to actually take the match, they need to be able to get up the hill. Or need to go down here and deal with other stuff. But Julets already... Wow! Level 5 Commander. They just went for it, huh? Wasn't even noticing this, but yeah, they went for all the Particle Beam. 
all the attacks. I mean, it's gonna be hard for any anything here, but oh, you know what? All oh, the street they need to get a couple masons up here and terraform a ramp. Like just crack open this southern side of Julette's base. It'd be tricky to do, but if they manage to do that, that could easily take it. However, it looks like they're instead gonna go for the northwest ramp. Take that out instead. Or go through there, because there isn't as much in the way of defenses. Be a bit easier to get through, but even now, Julette's is still able to take advantage of the hills. So the Strishum doesn't look like they're going to go around the back. It looks like they're just focusing instead on getting rid of as much of Julette's economy as possible. Get rid of all of these metal extractors. Break everything. And Julette's, on the other hand, just waltzing into the Strishum's base with a massively upgraded commander. Because why not? Now all Julette's needs to do is get in here, get all this reclaim. Where are their workers? Seriously, where are their workers? I actually can't tell. Okay, they have one. Seriously, they have one? Oh, they have two. One of which is building a caretaker, which is good. That will reclaim. Except it won't because it's not actually close enough to anything that can be reclaimed. So it won't reclaim anything. Okay, they have some... Re oh, no, they have some rebuilding going on. But there's so much reclaim here. They're, they're, <sighs> the hell does it matter? The Strishim throws in the towel. How much reclaim was there? There was 3,000 metal of reclaim. There was loads of metal. Gillette's however, does take that. That was nicely enough done. I, mean, I feel like a lot of that was basically a matter of Gillette's taking full advantage of their defensive position. Which was the wise thing to do. It's rather tricky to get uphill with the vehicles in this map, and the street stream just had to deal with that. I mean, metal income-wise, they were about even, but metal access-wise, they were also about even when it came down to it. It's just there was that chunk in the middle where Gillette's had accessed a lot more than Vestrisium, and Vestrisium was actually building properly. And Julet's... Oh, so, okay, so they both accessed about 1,800 metal. Julet's had accessed about 1,800 around the time their commander almost died. Which would have been pretty bad, because they would have lost another 500 metal like that, had they done so. Had they lost their commander. So actually, that was a pretty big jump. Because once they did that, it was like right about that point... Julet started pushing a bunch of metal into their factories and being able to use tons of it. Because they accessed a bunch, but they finally got back into using it. And then that's also around the point... Yeah, because if you look at the point where metal excess stops around here, and unit value starts to go up quite a bit. And then further, which admittedly part of that is because of the construction... Yeah, the units built goes up quite a bit. So where is it? It's metal excess. Here it stops. And naturally, of course, units built goes up quite a ways up, giving Julette's a temporary advantage. But yeah, energy is a bit of a tricky thing. You always gotta remember to build energy, and wind generators are tricky. Like I said before, the wind range parameter in the tooltip, which I can't easily point to because it, oh, but I can. Wind range. Wind range is super important. If that is 0.4, I would question building wind generators on the map. If it's 0.7 or above, go for it. If it's one or above, like, go for it, but maybe mix in some solar collectors. If it's one or above, go for it. Do not build solar collectors unless you need a place to have defensive power. Like, if you're worried about power being destroyed, then don't build wind generators when it's one minimum. But otherwise, build pure wind gens. That is way more efficient for cost. But at point four, it's it's on the edge of being worth it. it maybe it's worth it to build a few, but you're gambling. Because, bear in mind, wind generators are half the cost of solar collectors. So if a wind generator is producing one or more energy, it is more valuable than a solar collector, for cost. But if it's producing, like, 0.4, it's as, like, it's less valuable for cost. Like, in terms of a solar collector, it's half a solar collector at that point. Like, two wind generators at 0.4 wind, or 0.4 power, are producing about half as much as the solar collector for the same cost. Which is why, like, 0.7-ish is probably around the point where you can kind of go, well, most of the time it'll be way above that point, so it's not a big deal. When it gets to the minimum, I'll survive. It'd be close enough. And if it's one, just go for it. Okay, Ophelia is pointing out that they'd go for 0.4. I mean, it depends. It's kind of a risk-aversion thing. I mean, I'm a bit risk-averse, so... 
I think 0.7 to 1 is where I like 0.7 is where I'd start really thinking about it. 1 is where I'd always do it. 0.4 is not unreasonable, but that is a question of how much you're willing to risk the minimum for the cost. And if it's a zero, then I wouldn't bother. Although apparently, apparently Lamadeus does, so who knows. Anyhow, that was that. The next game is going to be between, yeah, where is it? The next game is going to be between Gayop and Rar on Into Battle. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple moments.